Good morning, church. Good morning. It is a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's give God some praise right there for the simple fact that as we just prayed that we are able to worship God in complete and total freedom without worry or persecution. Amen. It might not be like that all the time in our lives, so we got to make sure that we praise him for it right now because he is worthy. Amen. Amen. So come on, let's stand if you can as we go to the Lord in prayer and hang in there with us as we go directly into worship and praise afterward. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for safety throughout the last week. We thank you for that last breath that we took, Father God, because none of it is possible without you. We thank you for the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ through whom all of our hope comes, Lord. We thank you for being our help. We thank you for being all that plus more, Lord. And we ask that you bless this service this morning. Let us make a joyful noise to you. And we just pray that you will be pleased in all that happens. In your name we pray and say amen. 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 Thank you. 
draw near to you. Amen. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. By the hand of the Almighty, I've made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free. Walking by the hand of the 
can't stand against the Lord. No one can. No one will. Ain't that the truth, y'all? Hey. Who can stand against the King? No one will. Oh. Victory belongs to him, yeah. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Who can stand against the Lord? No one. No one can. No one will. Who can stand? against the king no one can no one will oh. Victory belongs. Victory belongs. 
time say oh oh victory belongs to him our sister has a couple of words to share with everybody all right come on y'all first i want to tell y'all what a blessing infinity bible church is my infinity bible church is such a blessing my son got murdered two years ago the church has been there for me all the way. They helped me with the support. They really supported me. Just a couple of weeks ago, at the spur of the moment, I had to go to Florida for the trial. And once again, Infinity was there. But I just wanted to put that first and foremost. Infinity is a, a great supporter. And God is so good. God, like they said, the miracles. I had miracles on top of miracles. And the victory does belong to him. Because when I was in that courtroom, that boy sat there so cocky. And when the prayer and they was coming back in, that boy turned around and gave me the middle finger. You just murdered my son and you turned around and gave me the middle finger? When they said guilty, first degree murder, guilty, use of a dead body, guilty for tampering evidence. He got 15 years for abuse of a dead body. He got five years for tampering with evidence, and he got life for first-degree murder. And the judge told him, you have to concurrent. He said, after that 20 years, your last day of 20 years, you will go to sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, you will serve your life sentence, no possibility of parole or nothing. And God is so good. He took my son's life and burnt my son. I mentally messed up because I had to watch the murder on video. I had to see my son laid in the bushes burnt. I had to see my son laying on that medical examiner's table. I come in here smiling because I don't want to make nobody uncomfortable. But I'm planning to be okay to make other people comfortable and making myself uncomfortable. So, like, it mentally damaged me. But God's been holding me and pushing me through. And, you know, and I know without God, I wouldn't have been able to get through what I went through, seeing what I saw, the mental damage it put on me images that are in my head, the way I close my eyes to go to bed some nights, and I can't go to sleep because I see those images, but God gives me the strength to still keep going, you know, and I just want to thank everybody that helped me to get to Florida to get justice for my son, I thank y'all so much, I love y'all for that, and I'm so grateful, I'm so, so grateful for Infinity Bible Church, and I just want to say thank you. Amen. Well, let's bow and oil. Father in heaven, we thank you for this testimony of your grace, of your love, of your mother, to love our sister. And Lord, we, our hearts are broken as well for her and the loss of her son. And God, we pray that as we anoint her in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would soothe and comfort her. Lord, bathe her in the pool of Siloam, anoint her with the balm of Gilead. Oh, God, you are the one who heals, and we in this church believe in your healing, physical healing, emotional healing, spirit. We thank you for our sister, Lord. Thank you for the courage that she displayed and just coming up here today, Lord. And so, God, we pray, Lord, that that prayer of faith, Lord, that you teach us to pray in James 5, that, Lord, if any of us need prayer, to be anointed with oil and then to pray the prayer of faith for the healing of the sick. So, God, we anoint our sister as we stretch out our hands as a congregation, as she has gone through this tragedy for her. So, God, we just anoint her in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And we give a shout-out to you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do in her life and in her family's life. And we pray this, Lord, today in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people shouted, Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a mighty God, right? Amen. A God who gets things done, right? A God who puts a period on things, amen? 
Wink men. And you know what? Hopefully that young man who's going to spend the rest of his natural life in jail saw something in Monique or just something got stirred somewhere where his life won't completely end in jail. Amen? He might die there, but he doesn't have to die there. Amen? Now, sis. All right. how God worked through me because when I was able to give my victim statement at the end of everything took over me and all I could do was stand there and the words that I wanted to say did not come out. The words that came out for that young man was you don't love yourself and while you're in here and thinking with all of this time you have, I hope you find Jesus and learn to love yourself so you can love other people, respect other human beings and I didn't know where that came from because those was not my intentions to say to this boy. I wanted to curse him out so bad. Amen. Proof positive right there. So remember, you pray for that man. Amen. Lord comforts her and we got to show her the love that she needs to be shown. Amen. But we got to pray for that soul as well because you never know what God's going to do with his life while he's in prison. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. 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 Let's give God a shout of amen and hallelujah if you want to right there. He's worthy. Amen. He's worthy. Hallelujah, my God is worthy, somebody say amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah, <laughs> we can go on and on and on about the glory, about the things that he's done. Every day he blesses me. Every day he blesses you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> if you won't praise him right here, you won't praise him anywhere. Amen. If you won't praise him amongst the saints who are ready to praise him just like you are. <laughs> Where are you going to praise him? I know you won't do it when you're among some other people, right? If anybody wants to bounce a little bit, you can get up and we're going to have a little praise break. This yeah. Huh. Come on. Say, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Everybody say, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Whoa, whoa. Everything's gonna be all right. Yeah. Holy Ghost told me everything's gonna be all right. Holy Ghost told me. Yeah. Everything is gonna be all right. 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 Yeah. Be all right. Ah, got a feeling. Everything is gonna be all right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes. Praise his name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> I greet you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost this morning. I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord with my co-saints. <laughs> Just made a word. I don't know. <laughs> And um, so I just have a few announcements. It's going to be really quick. Um, just Bible listening starts at 630 and Bible study at 7. Everything is on Zoom, and the link can be found in our, on our website. Um, now it's time for the offering. This is a time where we give back to the Lord what is rightfully his. And there's many ways to give here at um, Infinity Bible Church and on the um, screen you see you can give in the plate at the back you can give through the double doors by cow so please give as your heart sees fit 
Um, right after I pray, we will dismiss all the children. So after we pray, please, all the children may be dismissed to upstairs to Children's Church. And let's just pray for the offerings. Dear God, we come to you today. We thank you for being in our presence. We thank you for testimony. We thank you for our church, our church body. We thank you that we come together in your name. Lord God, we just ask that you bless this offering. We ask that you make us responsible um, parishioners and that we use this offering to further your kingdom. Lord God, as we bring up the man of God to, pr to preach, we just ask that you speak through him, tell us what we need to know, and what we can take with us for the rest of the week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let's give a shout out to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It's good to be with you. I am Pastor P. Diddy, here to bless the city, as you know. Yes, and uh, hey, let's, let's give a shout out for the worship team. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm glad we are just got this worship team. Thank you, everyone, just for leading us in worship. Wasn't that a great time of worship? Amen. Amen. I'm the outreach pastor at Infinity Bible Church. So many of you may not know me or how come we only see him twice a year because I'm the outreach guy you don't want the outreach guy here in church you want him reaching out amen, amen. so uh, I praise God I've been with you almost 10 years this January of 2023 I'll be here 10 and I am fired up today I'm fired up because we know that the Lord is in the house amen He's in the house. Jesus is in the house. And I'm fired up because I'm leaving for Nigeria uh, tomorrow night. Amen. Amen. So, uh, and, and the last time I was in Nigeria, I got this hat. I hope you like my hat. And uh, all right, all right. So when I walk down the street here in the boogie down, they're like, yo, who, who's that man? Who's that man? You say, I'm. I'm, I'm from the white side of Nigeria, and uh, glory be to God, uh, as you know, Pastor Ben and Jeanette are on staycay or vacay or whatever, and so they asked me to come and just to give you the word, so you're ready to receive the word, amen, amen, hallelujah. So we're going to be in Hebrews, I also, in the teaching of the word, just, I'm going to pray in just a moment for the teaching of the word. As we read Hebrews 11, 6, 
But I want you to know that Nancy and I just celebrated 42 years together. Amen. Hallelujah. That's my bride, my wife for life. I'm very thankful that in 42 years, I've been, I tell people, I've been, Jerry, I've been in assisted living for 42 years. They were like, you know, they think assist, assisted living. And because they say, Pastor P. Diddy, you don't look old enough to be in assisted living. And, and by the way, in three weeks, I turned 7 0. 7 0. So, turning 70 and on my way to heaven. Amen? And so it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm thankful that God has given me the gift of energy. Some of you may have gotten an email that uh, June 23rd, 1971. So I'm in fifth, my 51st year of ministry. Amen. And guess what? I haven't run out of gas yet. Because when we, you got the Holy Ghost, you never run out of gas. So I hope today that I can fill up your tank. And when you leave here, you'll say thanks. You, you, because I filled up the Holy Ghost, has filled up your tanks. I tried to thought of another word, but spank was in there. And I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. But uh, hopefully the Holy Ghost will spank us today with his word. Amen? Amen. And we can receive it. Uh, all five of our kids are married. Just to give you a quick report about my family, they're all serving Jesus. And they all live, all five and their spouses, they live right w within about an hour of me and Nancy D. I, that's my term of it. Nancy D., my bride, I call her my bride. Don't call her your wife. That, she sounds like, you know, oh, my wife. You know, she's your bride. I want you to remember her the way on the day that you married her. Amen. When she was walking down the aisle and all eyes were on her. And Nancy D is as beautiful today as she was 42 years ago. Amen. And I'm thankful that in 42 years of marriage, she's never thought of divorce. Thought of murder, but never divorce. <laughs> Glory to God. And, and uh, so all five of our kids are serving Jesus. Their spouses are serving Jesus. And all nine grandchildren are being raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you'll, you'll, you'll never see a college or a hospital named after Pastor P. Diddy. Maybe the other P. Diddy. Jesus being radical, reckless, and raw for him. And it's carrying on to the second and third generation. Amen? Amen. And that's what we need to be doing, putting down those bricks and foundations of legacy. So very thankful for all five of our kids, Naomi, Sarah, Luke, Zachariah, and Liddy. The grandchildren are Kayla, Luciano, Maximus, Maddie D, Judah, Adonai. And then we got Ava Joy. There's Gracie. Lillian Faith and Eleanor Hope, bang, bang, bang. And Nancy D and I are still in the mode of discipleship with our kids and grandkids, amen? Because parenting and discipleship never ends, you know? And so uh, I'm gr grateful to God, grateful to God. And I do want to have a handout here. And uh, I want you to bring this as a result of this, the message today. Dios te bendiga. Predique la palabra de Dios en el nombre de Jesús. Amen. Amen. Glory a Dios. And uh, so this is something uh, I want everybody to take one. This is a piece that I did for my doctoral work. Many of you know that, uh, here we go. Many of you know that I got my doctorate since serving here. Thank you. And um, so now you can call me Dr. P. Diddy here to bless the city. Be a teaching opportunity. The reason I had my bachelor's, I had my master's, but, you know, learning never stops, amen? amen. And, and when I was 60 years old, God told me to get my doctorate because God said, it, you're going to be more effective in the Middle East, Central Asia, and Africa where I go. And because I got that DR in front of my name, and it's a real DR, it's not like a bootleg DR, you know. There's some bootleg doctors out there with that hocus pocus. I worked nine years for it, amen, did all my schoolwork from 11 p.m. to about 4 a.m., and uh, so God has used that to glorify his name, 
So what I want you to do, and I have a bunch of extras here, thank you so much for handing those out, is I want you to give this to your neighbor, all right? Uh, and, and in fact, I got a whole box of these, but I want you to give this to your neighbor. Take a stack of them. They'll be at the back of the church when uh, we get uh, uh, It's basically a survey in English and in Spanish. And so I want you to use that as an outreach, right? I'm the outreach pastor here at an IBC Infinity Bible Church. And so because I'm the outreach, I want you to follow my lead as I follow Jesus. Because we always need to be reaching out, reaching out, reaching out. I got saved because some crazy Jesus freak, a converted hippie, who bumped into me while I was hit long red hair down the middle of his back, a Jerry Garcia tie-dye tank top, gnarly bell-bottom blue jeans and bare feet. Say that fast five times. <laughs> and he loved me in that moment. This guy, just 10 minutes, he loved me and shared Christ with me. And that night, bang, 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 I received Jesus Christ. And I was a God-hating atheist, amen? <laughs> I hated God, and the Holy Ghost, bang, came down, and I was converted to Jesus back 51 years later. So may my life be an encouragement to all of you. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we love you today. We just love you with all of our hearts, God. And our hearts are filled with joy, God, <laughs> that you love us as much as you do. Why, Lord? That's the why we should be asking, Lord. Why do you love us so much? But you do with, with all of our craziness and lord all, all of our with an everlasting love because when your arms were stretched out on the cross you loved us from eternity past to eternity future so god we just lift up the name of jesus today thank you for my sisters and brothers the teenagers the young people the not so young people that are all here today god just fill them with overflowing fill them with your joy your peace your patience your grace your love, your mercy, your compassion, your pray this in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's little people shouted, amen, amen. So as we look at the word of God today, I'm just going to give one verse. You know, I, I believe in the KISS principle, right? K-I-S, keep it simple. So, uh, and of course, it reminds me to get a kiss from my wife. And, uh, but if you can put up on the screen, Hebrews 11, 6. It's a simple, look at this and read it with me, okay? But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This verse is powerful, my brothers and sisters. When we memorize this verse, I encourage you to do it, then it will literally change your life. I don't know about you, but I, I, I need a change every day, you know. I can't wait for that 3,000-mile that check like my car, my bootleg car that I have. I need, I need an oil change every day. I need transmission work. I need, well, I, I don't have any brakes. Just, I just keep running forward, so watch out. But look at this. It starts with the word but. But, in other words, however, and we won't get into it, but without faith. So I want you to remember two words today. And in fact, the last time I was here, you're going to remember I preached on this as well. But yeah, I always need a reminder, amen? Because I, 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 you know, my, I think my brain's all there. But, you know, I was never a good student. Because when I was in seminary, I didn't graduate magna cum laude or summa cum laude. I graduated, th th thank you, laude. Thank you, laude. Thank you, laude. Just a D, that's all I ask of thee. And so, you know, when I was in high school, I never let my school work get in the way of my education. Amen? So my, I, I tell my kids, I was a straight-A student. I got an A in lunch. I got an A in gym. I got an A in study hall, I got an A in recess, and I got an A in detention. I was a straight A student, glory be to God. They're like, Dad, you're nuts. And I say, yeah, I am nuts. <laughs> Without faith. So I just want you to remember two words today. By faith. In Espanol, por fe. See? Por fe. So on three, I want you to shout out, by faith. 
okay? Well, wait a minute. I said, on three. Come on. Are you listening or aren't you listening? Come on. So on three, you're going to shout out by faith. Already? One, two, three. By, by faith. In Espanol, one, two, three. Por fe. Amen. Amen. So it's everything that you do today is by faith. Did you know that? The chair you're sitting in, it's by faith that that chair is holding you up, right? And, and it, it, it's, it's by faith. The fact that this floor is holding us up here in the church and we're not down in the basement, it's by faith. So everything we do is what? It's by faith. It's by faith. You know, I, I, just, I just hope that... Uh, you know, Jesus comes back today because my rent is due. But, uh, you, you know, and the landlord will have to track me down. And, but the, 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 the point is, is that even paying your bills, it has to be. Yes, getting in your car or getting on. Everything we do is by faith. So this says, if we don't have faith, what happens? We can't please God. Without faith, we cannot please God. So, you know, I, I always ask people, how, how can I, how can we make God happy? Now, people say, well, wait a minute. God's the spirit. We have to worship him in spirit and in truth, right? But I want to make God happy that we can grieve the Holy Spirit. I think it's Ephesians or Philippians or hesitation, somewhere like that. I, that's not a book. I just made that up. See, I'm, I'm throwing little tidbits out there to you. It's like, blap, 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 blap. I'm going to keep you awake, all right? So there's a verse that says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, right? You know where that verse is. Somebody can look it up. And so what does that say? That we can make God, we can make God sad, then that means we can make God happy. So what do we want to do as followers of Jesus Messiah? We want to make God happy. We don't want to make God sad, right? And we want to make God glad. We want to, because God, it says in the, in, in the scriptures that God inhabits the praises of his people, just as we were praising him here this morning. But look at that. Without faith, we cannot make God by faith. How do we make God happy? By faith. And that's how we make God happy. For he or she who comes to God must believe that he is, that he is the pre-existent one, that he is the one that is omnipotent, that omniscient and omnipresent. And he is the one that controls our life. And when I started to do this mission, work, I, I jumped out of the plane without a parachute and I let Jesus be my parachute. So I'm, I'm still out there, and I, I haven't hit the ground yet. And many of you know, you know the, the church does not pay me a salary, well, a, a dollar a year. I think I got an increase last year. You know, we used to have a little ceremony. Pastor Joe would give me one, one year, a couple of years ago, when Pastor Joe was still here. Is he still alive, by the way? Yeah, okay, <laughs> praise the Lord. I'm sorry, Dean, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. But I remember I was sitting up here, and he was like, it was, it was the first Sunday in January, and he was like, oh, man, he said, I got to pay you your salary. He, he said, I don't have a dollar on me. And he, see, he said, wait a minute, I got four quarters. And I said, I'll take it, I'll take it. So I live by faith. I live by faith. When people mail money to me, that's how I get paid. I don't have any big supporters. That's how God wants us to live. Because our security is not in our 401k, right? Because I know your 401k, it's like, now it's just an okay. No, it ain't okay. And, and, and you got that dreaded condition, Mafunzalo. You ever had Mafunzalo? So say, say, say it slow, Mafunzalo. Say it slow. My funds are low. Your funds are low. <laughs> you just say, by faith. Brothers and sisters and sisters and brothers, it's by faith. That's how we please God. So everybody in America wants security. 
You, you know, when I travel around the world, I hope I get to some of the places where I've been because I do want to give a report that uh, I, I've been in uh, 11 countries since January 1st of 2022. And you know, on January 1st night service, you know what God, God gave me two words. And you know what those two words were? Run faster. And I was like, Lord, you want me to run? I mean, I'm already going 55 miles an hour. And God said, well, the, 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 the speed limit on the turnpike is 70. So you need to go 15 miles quicker. And I said, okay, Lord, so that's why I've been running so fast. Because I told my family when I turned 60, I said, I'm only, I praise the Lord, okay? And so God said, all right, I only got, so 70 to 120 is 50 years. I've already lived 70, so I only got 50 years left. And I want to run as fast as I can. And may that be a prophetic word to all of you that are older than 50. I know we don't have many of you that are older than 50. But God wanted me to run faster. So I have been to Nigeria. I have been to Egypt. I, I have been to Iraq. I have been to Kurdistan. I have been to Ukraine where the bombs were dropping and the bullets were flying. So I just want to encourage you that, and thank you for your prayers. But how do I do all that? I do it by faith. Amen. You're listening. You're listening. Amen. I do it by faith. So I'm now working in 18 countries as your outreach pastor. And people say, man, how did you get there? I say, I mean, you know, what did you do? I, I said, you can ask me again, but I don't know. And that's the beauty of faith. When we please God and we come to him by faith, we don't have to have everything figured out. Can I get a witness on that somewhere up in here? You know, in America, I, I tell you, the persecuted church in Nigeria, they are so simple in their faith. And when they go to church every Sunday, they don't know whether or not they're going to walk up. Nigeria is the most dangerous place in the world to be a follower of Jesus. In the last month, and that's why I'm leaving for Nigeria, in the last month, just hundreds of your sisters and brothers in Christ have been murdered. The, the, the terrorists come in with machine guns, with AK-47s and AR-15s, with bombs. One church, Catholic church in southwest Nigeria, they, they even had a helicopter. Over 50 people killed, over 150 wounded. So those believers, they live by faith even when they go to church on a Sunday morning. Even that, to go in to a place of worship, to worship Jesus, it's by faith. So that's why I love their simplicity, because they understand this. And you know what they say? They said, we're going to go and we're going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ regardless of months. And we'll do this when I'm there in Nigeria this week. We gather together the persecuted believers. And, we, and these are victims of persecution. I'll show some rough pictures here. But these are brothers and sisters in Christ that they bear the marks of persecution. And so when they go in, when the terrorists come in, uh, th these terrorists, if they don't have guns, so uh, I'm going I'm to share just two brief pictures, but uh, they're, they're difficult to look at. But these are your brothers and sisters in Christ. And, you know, they were murdered. They were murdered by machetes simply because they love the Lord Jesus. So that's the price that they pay by faith, to live by faith. And you got to think about it in Nigeria. Unemployment's high. They, they struggle to urge you to, by faith, pray for the persecuted church overseas because they need your prayers and they need my prayers. And so as we continue to look at that verse, let me also show you just a report in another place of Africa where I began working five years ago. Praise God. And people say, well, how did you get to East Pakot? And I said, I got there by faith in Nairobi. And I'm sitting next to a pastor. And he says, uh, in his African voice, he says, uh, uh, you're, you're Pastor William Devlin. And I said, yes, sir. And he said, uh, your reputation here in Kenya is, is that you, 
you like to go to the dangerous places. I said, yeah, that's my calling. The place has to be hard. It has to be dangerous. And it has to be where nobody else is going. And he says, well, you, you need to come to Kenya. And I said, Kenya? It's got more church to criteria. And he said, no. He said, you need to come to East Pakot. It's 12 hours north of Nairobi. It's not first, second, or third, or fourth world. It's fifth world. People sleep in mud huts. That's where they live. The men are cattle rustlers. They go out, and it's a tribe of about 100,000 in a valley. You have to go over a mountain pass to get there. And the men go out on raids, and they steal cattle from other tribes. And they'll live their tribe's cattle. And then the women, the women, unfortunately. Uh, and, and by the way, there's no schools. There's no government help. It's out in the middle of nowhere. There's no electricity, no water. There's, when you think of there's nothing, there's nothing. They don't even have any currency. And so we began to go in there five years ago, and we began to preach the gospel, amen? And through a trans remote region of Africa that takes 12 hours to get there as you're bouncing over the mountain pass in a four-wheel drive vehicle. That's me bouncing around. I think you can tell. And we get there, how? By faith. And we began to preach the gospel. And we would gather the tribal elders together. In fact, they made me a chief when I was there just a couple of years ago. Chief Loriono. And they gave me that nice, they, they made me a chief. I said, what does Loriono mean? And they said, um, it, it means big white bull with long horns. I said, okay, that'll fit. That'll fit. And these folks, they've never seen a car before. They've never seen a Mazungo. Mazungo is Swahili for white guy, right? And they've never seen any of these things. And so when I go in, it's, you know, the little kids, they'll see, they think they've seen a ghost when they, I just uh, was there four weeks ago. And it's just glorious because we've begun, when we preach the gospel there, we'll gather together 300 people under a tree. And that's where they worship Jesus. They don't even need a building. And so we preach the gospel. And at the end of the gospel presentation, 300 people there, 200, 150, all of them raised their hands to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. They've never heard about Jesus before. If you can imagine that, there's places on planet Earth and they've never heard about Jesus. But how do I get there? It's by faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So let me just, without looking around, are you pleasing God? Are you living by faith? Most Americans, they want security. They want safety. They want comfort. But our lives are in the hands of Jesus. And the church today, it's by faith. Every breath you take, it's by faith. Everything you do, it's by faith. So are you living by faith or are you tangled up with worry and the concerns of this world? So as we go to East Pakot, we began to preach the gospel. And, and thousands of people are coming to faith in Jesus. And then we also said they've never had schools before. Build schools. Amen? So these we, we, we can put up a structure like this. In six days for six thousand dollars, glory be to God. And then, uh, then we buy uniforms for the little girls. And there's a story I want to tell you about the little girls. And but why, why the rocks? Why, why, why do they bring a rock to school? That's what they sit on when we're teaching. In fact, you you know one of the teachers there. It's a Sululu school. And so you see these little girls. They're sitting on planks of wood and rocks. And so we've now built 10 schools and 13 churches in this area. And when we got there, we found that women and girls were not second-class citizens. They are not third-class citizens. They're not fourth-class citizens. They are fifth-class citizens. Because, and then goats, and then girls and women. So how do you transform a culture like that? You do it, amen, you're catching on, glory to God. You do it by faith, because we're going in there, and, you know, with money we've raised, 
and we're going, and we say, we told them, we're going to build you schools, we're going to preach the gospel, and we're going to build churches, because they marry their little girls off at age 12. They, they, this is someone that worships rocks, trees, mountains, etc. And they have a God that, that they, a false God. And I tell them, if you, you, you believe in a false God. And that God lives in a place called Mount Tiati. It's a very irregularly shaped uh, mountain. And they believe that their God lives inside that mountain. But yet the girls at age 12, what the girls do is they begin they just started to menstruate and going into puberty. And when they begin to put beads in their hair, they're basically saying, and I'm going to get a little graphic here, that we are ready to be married. But the year before they get married, they're mutilated. It's called FGM, female genital mutilation. And so when these little girls put beads in their hair, that is saying to their culture, to this tribe of 100,000, I'm the highest bidder, 30 goats, 30 cattle, gets a little 12-year-old girl. Imagine that. So how do you, we got in there, we said, Lord Jesus, as we cried out to God, as we fasted, as we prayed, Lord, we want to bring in the gospel. And I'm telling you, you haven't lived until you've been in a place where you can preach the gospel, where the name of Jesus has never been heard. And yet you tell that God in Mount Tiati, he doesn't exist, Messiah. He is the one true and living God. Can I get an amen on that? And when these folks hear the truth of the gospel, they say, bang, I want to receive Jesus into my heart. And I say, you haven't lived. I'm, this is, I, I describe it as apostolic because it's like living in the first century where we're going into places where Jesus has never been taught or heard of and they hear the name of Jesus and then here, in every hand, the tribal elders, the chief, the women, the men, the children. And then they come up to me and they say, okay, we want a church. And so the original church that we build is under a tree. Nowhere at the hot sun, the hot East Pakot sun. So as we went in there, we said, well, these little girls, they're, they're, they're getting mutilated at age 11. And then they're... All right, all right, good. If it's, uh, if it's Barack Obama, tell him you call him back. All right. So as we went in there, we said, Lord, how are we going to transform this culture? And you know what the Lord said? We'll do it by faith. Amen? We'll do it by faith because there's no other way to do it. We could have come up with all kinds of fancy plans and money, but because God has given us favor, then Bang, we were able to, again, to get a little graphic because you need to pray for this tribe. East Pakot, P-O-K-O-T. It's a rite of passage for these little girls. And they hold them down without anesthesia and they cut away all their external genitalia with either a rusty razor blade or a rusty knife or a shard of broken glass. And, if you, and then they sew them up, again, without anesthesia. And then a year later, the parents sell them to the highest bidder as a rite of passage for some 6,000 years the only way we could do that is by faith and so we went in there and we prayed we fasted and we said Lord Jesus teach us how to do this so as the men the cattle rustlers that that would kill people from a neighboring tribe just to steal their cattle we said Lord we're going to preach the gospel well then the men came to faith but what are they going to do for a lot before? So the Holy Spirit illumination said, teach them farming. It's also a very dry area. They call it the dry jungle way up in the mountains. And so we began to teach them how to dig water ponds during the rainy season of two months, December and January, that water pond fills up. And then they plant the seeds that we share with them. And now that place is flourishing with maize, with sweet potatoes, with, and we've literally started a economic revolution, but also a cultural revolution and a gospel revolution. Amen? Because we needed a revolution. We needed a Jesus revolution to, 
uh, to, to, to bring a solution to the pollution so there could be a resolution. Can I get a witness on that somewhere up in here? Man, I'm sounding like Larry Hendricks. Yeah. Man. So it's by faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And those that come to him must believe that he is. He is what? That he is the God who will provide. He's the Jehovah Jireh. He is the provider. That whatever your needs are, God is going to provide. Can I get a witness on that somewhere up in here, up in here? You know, and I know times, you know, uh, I, I, and I, I, with the bills coming in, and then I, 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 I love that scripture that, that says, don't worry, be happy. That, that's in the, somewhere in the scriptures, right? It is. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and then the peace for it. Keep your heart and your mind. It'll prevent you from going insane. Because we can get insane, can't we, with all the worry? I mean, man. But you know, worry is fun. F-U-N, remember this. It's foolish, it's unnecessary, and it's not for the child of God. So I always tell people worrying is fun. They say, what are you talking about? It's foolish, F, not for the child of God. Because we have a God that has a cattle on a thousand hills, amen? And God can provide every one of our needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So but we get so tangled up and we say, Lord, I, I don't know how are you going to how are you, you going to work this all out? How does he work it out? By faith. He works it out by faith. So let me. So you pray for these little girls. So Easter Sunday, 2018, suicide bomber walks into Zion Evangelical Church in Batacola, Sri Lanka. It's in a very poor section of you know, Sri Lanka. Is that little teardrop-shaped island off the southeast coast of India. It's been a lot in the news because they, their president just resigned. But on Easter Sunday, 2018, four years ago now, filled with ball bearings and C4 explosives, and they walked in, and as they walked in, they detonated that suicide bomb with their cell phone and killed in three different churches, killed 200 adults, 50 little children, and catastrophically wounded 500 people. I saw it on the news, and I was like, Lord, I don't know one person, and you live by faith, it's always in the going process, right? Because think about that. What are the first two letters in the word God? Yeah, you never thought about that before, did you? What are the first two letters in the word gospel? Go. What are the first two letters in good news? Go. Go, go, go. God, gospel, good news. You think the Lord's trying to tell us something? Yes, he is. To go, go, go. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And I say to people, that's what I do. They say, where do you go? Into all the world. Well, I mean, where? Into all the world. So right now I'm in 18 countries. And just pray for me as I'm crying out to God to go on other places. Well, I, I didn't even know that when the battle started in Ukraine, and I'll get to that in just a minute, but back to Sri Lanka. So I said, Lord, I want to go to Sri Lanka, but I didn't know anybody. And I thought, well, I don't know whether she's Indian or Pakistani or Sri Lankan. And I called her up, Dr. Monique, OBGYN in the People's Republic of Philadelphia. And by faith, I made that phone call. You see, when you live by faith, God begins to give you an illumination that you've never had before. Because when we're not living by faith, we're all tangled up with the cares of this world. And so, then there can be some Holy Spirit domination in order to reach all the nations. I just made that one up. All right, Larry, I know I can get a witness from Larry Hendricks. Where's April? April, can I get a witness on that as well? Because I know you're smarter than your husband. 
And so, you know, when, when we're willing to go, when we're willing to go, then I believe, and I could build an entire doctrine around this, live by faith. Some exciting things happen. Because, the, you know, the folk that are, that are all tangled up and, and they're all worried about what's going on, then I say, look, the most exciting place you can live as a follower of Jesus is right on the edge. On the edge of faith. And then all the time, every day, I step out into thin air. And you know what? I got one where he's walking in thin air. I'm walking on, not on thin air. I'm walking on the 7,747 promises that Jesus has given us in the Word of God. And Hebrews 11:6 6 is one of them. Without faith, it's impossible to make God happy. So as I saw that destroyed church and heard about all the 50 little children were murdered that day. And I said, Dr. Monique, and you know what she said to me? This was weird. When you live by faith, some weird, good weird things happen. You know what she said? You're going to my country, aren't you? And I said, I... I, how did you know that? I mean, I was like, whoa, God, you're good. And I said, I don't know anybody. And she said, I got somebody to call, for you to call. I said, who? Uncle Elmo. I said, has he ever been on Sesame Street? <laughs> but Uncle Elmo, is he like red and furry and big eye? You know? and, and so I called uh, Uncle Elmo in Sri Lanka, and he says, Pastor, you get on a plane you get here, and I said, I'll have $30,000 in my pocket because people want to help funeral costs, medical costs, family income replacement. I got on a plane. That's when I went over with for eight days after the explosion, and all we had was one name, Uncle Elmo. And we got there, and we met all the victims' families, all the people that died. We met every one of those 250 families. And we bless them with finances. Said we're here to help. How did we do that? By faith. And then, and then, I go to the church. It's going to get a little scary in here. Fasten your seat. I go to the destroyed church. Larry said I just had another hour to, to, before we need to end. Thank you. Bless you, my brother. Bless you. And so I go to the destroyed church. There's still bodies and blood on the church, but, but nothing's there. The ceiling's gone. The walls are gone. Everything is gone. And the pastor and I were standing there. And I, Fillmore Church, a church of a thousand, by the way. It's one of the largest churches in Sri Lanka, and that's why the terrorists went there. So I'm standing there as the acrid smoke is still rising from the destroyed church. Bodies and blood still on the ground. And I turned to the pastor and I said, Pastor, I want to help you. And we're, we're both just weeping. I mean, it's just in the midst. I said, I said, my brother, by faith, I'm going to go back to America and I'm going to raise $100,000 and we're going to build you a new church. And then I thought to myself, Lord, what did I just say? What, what did I just do? I've never raised $100,000 before, but God provided. How? By faith. He, can I get a witness on that? Up in here, up in here. Come on. It's by faith. It's by faith. And I, so you know what I did? I wrote 50 pastors, and I said, well, bro, you saw it on the news. How are, you know. I, and, and including this church, including this church, 50 pastors each sent in $2,000. And I, 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 Sean Zion Evangelical Church, I have the money, and I'm getting on a plane, and I'm going to hand deliver the $100,000. And guess what? All right, uh, 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 you believe me, this is the church. We've totally rebuilt 
It's completely finished. I thought I had another picture. But look, look at that. It's completely rebuilt. Glory be to God. I think I got one in here. But let me just show this to you because now rebuilt by faith, by faith. I'm not going to take time to look for it. But you can believe me, amen? $100,000. So I was at a meeting in Washington, D.C., giving a bunch of ambassadors at the State Department a report. And the, because everybody heard about it. And I said, yeah, I went over there. I saw the need. I came back. And I raised $100,000. And then I brought it over. One of the ambassadors in the crowd, he raised there. And he cash? I said, yes, sir. I, I, I said, I brought over $100,000 cash. And he said, did you declare that? And I went right like this. I said, yes, I did, Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador. And I said, I declare, Jesus, that you're a generous God. I declare, I declare. So I said, yeah, I did declare it. I said, okay, see you later, alligator. As we conclude this morning, I want to live by faith. Because that's how the early church lived. They didn't have big buildings. They didn't have money. They, and, and so by faith, right now, this Tuesday, day after tomorrow, we are sending one of the leaders from the tribe of East Bacot, who's I'm flying him to Cuba. Think about this. Cuba has never been a sending church. They've never, they've had evangelical Christians. I, I said, you need to be a sending church. And so I challenged them, and they said, we'll go to East Bacot. So this brother, one of the tribal leaders, who speaks English and the local language. He's flying from Nairobi to Istanbul to Havana this Tuesday. You remember Peter Kiptalam. And he's going to train up missionaries from Cuba to come back to Pakat. How are we doing that? By faith. By faith. By, so living by faith is an exciting life. And maybe you're here today and you're like, man, you, you are like the, the craziest Mazungo I've ever heard. And do, do, do you know Jesus by faith? And at the conclusion of the service, uh, I'll be up here. And if you need healing for anything, we just I want to anoint you with the oil of the Lord. Amen. And uh, I'll be waiting up here for you. But uh, and first of all, if you're here today and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to pray a prayer. You can say it out loud. You can say it in your heart. But maybe there's somebody here today that has never said, Jesus, come into my heart and life and transform me and save me. And I receive the shed blood of Jesus. And if you've never done that, where are you going to go when you die? You know, one day, we hope it's later rather than sooner. But where are you going to go when you die? Where are you going to spend eternity? Life, the scripture says that life is just, it's like a shed. It's like a little cloud that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. Most of your existence you will spend in eternity because eternity is eternal. It never ends. You've seen these pictures from the James Webb telescope that the universe just goes on and on and on and on. Are you going to be in heaven with God or are you going to be in hell without God? So let me just leave you in a quick prayer. And repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And right now, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me, to wash me, to cleanse me. I repent and turn my back, come into my life, come into my heart, change me. I believe, Jesus, that you were raised from the dead on the third day. I receive you now, today, by faith, as my Lord and as my Savior. If you prayed that prayer, we'd love to talk with you. Or you prayed that and continue to start you on the journey of how to be a follower of Jesus. And Christian, you're here today. Are you willing to live by faith? Or are you willing to live by faith? And so if you're here today and you're a believer, I want to lead you in a prayer. And repeat after me. 
Lord Jesus, I heard today the word of God that without faith, I want to please you. Lord, I want to make you happy. Lord, I want to make you glad. And so right now, Lord Jesus, I raise my hands and I say to you, Jesus, I'm willing to live by faith in everything I do to live by faith. Father in heaven, thank you for this great worship time we've had together of singing and praising you. You do inhabit the praises of your people. And Lord, thank you for the prayers that have been prayed today from those who needed to know you and to those that wanted to live by faith. So Father in heaven, we do pray for the persecuted church, God. We pray, Lord, that we would be diligent in praying for them because they live by faith every moment of every day, even at ten service underneath the trees and in those church buildings so lord thank you for infinity bible church lord thank you for the sisters and brothers and the children and the teenagers that have gathered together here today and lord our cry to you lord is that we just want to live by faith we want to live by faith thank you for everyone that's here lord fill every heart and lord Thank you that you're with us and that you'll never leave us. Folks shouted, amen. amen. So how are we going to live? By faith. How are we going to live? By faith. How are we going to live? By faith. Once for the Father, by faith. Once for the Son, by faith. Once for the Holy Ghost, by faith. Larry, I give it back to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.